Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Ankit Parak and I work as a consultant in pediatric pulmonology, allergy and sleep medicine at Children's Test Clinic, New Delhi, NBLK Max Hospital, New Delhi. So tracheomalacia is a condition where the walls of the windpipe or the trachea, they are weak and they are floppy. Now when that happens, it leads to many problems with breathing and this occurs usually early in life. Tracheomalacia can involve whole of the windpipe or it can involve only a small part of the windpipe. Now, what are the causes of tracheomalacia in children? So tracheomalacia is usually congenital, which means that the child was actually born with a tracheomalacia. Now children who have tracheomalacia, they can have associated weakness of the voice box or the larynx known as a laryngomalacia. And sometimes children can have a weakness of the lower airways or the bronchi known as bronchomalacia. Now in some children, Tracheomalacia can happen because of compression to the trachea. So something compresses the trachea from the outer side. And this is usually a blood vessel which passes too close to the windpipe and press it. Now that leads to weakness of a segment of trachea. In children who have tracheomalacia, they can have other anomalies or problems with other systems of the body, the most common being problems with the lungs, problems with the heart, problems with the esophagus, etc. Now, what are the common symptoms of tracheomalacia in children? Well, children who have tracheomalacia, the symptoms could be mild, but sometimes the symptoms could be very severe and sometimes threatening the life. Children usually will have difficulty in breathing, they can have fast breathing, they can have retractions in this part and this part when they are breathing in and breathing out. The effort which is required for breathing goes up. They can have noisy breathing, so they could have a strider, a sound like this. Sometimes if tracheomalacia involves the lower part, they can have a wheezy sound like this. So children with tracheomalacia can get sick with viral infections and might require frequent hospital admissions. And sometimes these hospital admissions could be long. How do we make a diagnosis of tracheomalacia? So the diagnosis of tracheomalacia requires a flexible bronchoscopy. So in this, we usually pass a very small equipment through the nose known as a bronchoscope. And with the help of this, we examine the trachea during breathing of the child. In children who have tracheomalacia or weak tracheal walls, the walls of the trachea seems to be approximating to each other. They seem to be collapsing like this. We can also make a diagnosis where the tracheomalacia is present in whole of the windpipe or only in a part and whether it happens during inspiration that is breathing in or breathing out that is expiration. We can also judge the degree of tracheomalacia with a bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy also helps us in looking at the voice box of the larynx and the lower airways as well to understand whether there is an associated laryngomalacia or a bronchomalacia. In some situations, we tend to do a bronchogram where we put in a small amount of dye into the windpipe of the child and examine it under x-rays or a fluoroscopy. Now, if a child has tracheomalacia, then what needs to be done? The treatment of tracheomalacia depends on the severity. In children who have a very mild disease, usually follow-up is needed. 
We need to be careful about feeding, growth of the child, presence of any associated reflux and antibiotics for infections. No definite treatment might be required in children who have a mild problem. Children as they grow up and they reach one to two years of age, the cartilages become more strong and the trachea goes away. Now in children who have moderate to severe symptoms, they need some kind of treatment. The commonest treatment is in the form of a CPAP which is required and the CPAP can be used with a small CPAP machine with either a nasal mask which is worn on the nose of the child or with the help of a nasal cannula usually known as an OptiFlow. This needs to be continued for a period of time till the child matures and grows out of the trachea malacia. But occasionally we get children who have a very severe disease and despite being on a CPAP, they get recurrent hospital admissions and get into problems. In this situation, trachea malacia requires a surgery and the standard procedure is known as an aerotopixy. So in case your child is having noisy breathing, recurrent episodes of wheezing, repeated hospitalizations, the child might be having a problem of trachea malacia. You need to get in touch with a pediatric pulmonologist for further opinion and treatment. Thank you.